Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and today I have a video that I've been putting off doing but I've been getting a lot of questions on this topic and it's something I really think we need to cover. But first, I have a viewer that sent me something. Now I have viewers once in a while they'll send me They'll send me a couple of bucks for a Pepsi. <laughs> Gotta love them guys. And speaking of that, <clears throat> sorry, just had to do it. And I have a, a uh, viewer, Heath Holden, hope I pronounced that right, down in Florence. And he sent me a shirt. And it's got the name Snapper and a cutout of a Snapper. He sent me a picture and he was wearing one of them. He says, but I still wear yours all the time. But he says, I thought I'd try and see if I could make one. So I said, hey, I kind of like that. Send me one and I'll pay you for it. Oh, no, he says, I'll just send you one. Well, he sent me two. After I got the little bag open, it came in. I said, man, this is a heavy shirt. Well, there was two of them in there. And the other one was a little bit different. This is what the other one looks like. And I got to say, it's colorful and I like it. So he thank you very much for the shirts. I really appreciate them. Now, our video. I've been getting a lot of questions on this stupid safety system on my machine. <sighs> Something's always going wrong with it, and why do we need these things? Well, a company doesn't make a safety system or a safety appliance or anything unless it's really necessary. And the only way they find out if they really need this is if somebody gets hurt and tries to sue them. I used to work for a company called, well, it was Manning, Maxwell, and Moore, Shawbox, Crane, and Dresser Industry. And we were getting sued all the time. Uh, we made lifting items, uh, chain hoists, chain falls, tuggets, overhead cranes, overhead hoists, and people would do things with these that wasn't really intended purpose of the item and they got hurt and they tried suing us or suing them. So they would have to add things to these uh, products to try to protect us from ourselves and I've had a couple of people ask me can you just take it all off well yes you can but there's a reason a lot of these switches are on here now I have to admit most of them are really stupid well <laughs> all of them are really stupid but Sometimes we need to be protected. And I want to tell you a story. I had a viewer write me an email. He says, Jim, how can I put a seat, a safety switch on my seat? Well, he's got an old snapper, like the one, the 33 inch I use out in the building. It don't have any switches on it, it's too old. And he had one like this. He's an elderly gentleman, a little bit older than me, and he was mowing his front yard. And he's in the city, so they have curbs. Now a snapper, the deck doesn't really stick out too much farther past the tires, unless you have like a 42 inch. He either had a 28 or a 33. Okay, he's trying to mow the grass that's laying on the curb. And he's driving like we all do, running the tires down the cement curb. And 
the front tire slipped off. And when it did, it jerked the steering wheel to the side and it came down on the curb and came to a very abrupt halt, which threw him off and he landed on his chest on the pavement. And I can't remember if he bruised a couple ribs or broke them. So he's laying on the asphalt in pain <laughs> with the wind knocked out of him and the snapper's still going. Now on these, all the snappers, even my old one, <clears throat> you have to lift the lever up and step on the pedal to hold the mower deck on. I had an old Comet and it was different. You had to lift the lever up and swing it over a hook. Now that baby was not coming un, what would you even call it, unhooked or or kicked out like the new ones do for anything. You had to physically grab that handle, lift it off that hook to kill the mower deck. Fortunately, he didn't have that. So when he fell, fell off, the deck did stop, but the engine kept running. <laughs> hey, it's in gear. It kept going. It jumped back on the curb and went up towards the house. Now that's the bad part, but it gets worse. When it got close to the house, it made a curve and turned around and came back. Now, <clears throat> talk about bad luck. It came back around, come down off the curb, and ran over both of his legs. Now thank God the mower deck wasn't running. Now, if this machine had safety switches, which we all hate, this thing would have stopped as soon as he fell off. Or I should say, as soon as it threw him off. So his email was, how can I put a safety switch on? Well, he ended up ordering a regular snapper seat with a safety switch. <coughs> and he hooked it up. Now, the only problem with this is it's going to kill your engine as soon as you get off that seat. Even if it's in neutral, the deck is off, it's in park, everything, it's still going to kill the engine because that's the only switch that's on the machine. But that's what he wanted. I helped him hook it up. And if it happens again, it won't run over him. So yes, these switches are important. Now I tell a few people, and if you watch my videos, hey, I've told you all, if you want to check to see if you have a problem with your safety system, there is a block on the side of the engine that's called, they call it the magneto shorting block. Typically, there are three wires hooked to that block. One goes to your coil, which kills your engine. One comes from your ignition switch, which kills your engine. And the other wire comes from your module on your safety system that kills the engine if any one of the safety switches is tripped when it's not supposed to be. So if your machine will not start, I typically tell people, take all them wires off, pull your spark plug wire off, get yourself one of these. This is a, I don't even know what to call it. It's for testing for spark. You snap your wire on here. You can see a gap in there and you can adjust this gap for whatever you want and you clip this somewhere on your engine or your frame, any ground. Or if you're like me, I just hang on to the dang thing and hit the key. Hey, it's not going to kill you. It does keep my watch battery charged. I never changed the watch battery in years. But that's how you can tell if the coil's working. Now, hook the ground, not the ground wire, hook the wire up coming from the coil to your block. 
and see if the engine will start. <clears throat> if it doesn't start, then the wire coming from the coil going to that block is melted through somewhere on the hot engine and <clears throat> it's shorting out your coil. Next you want to hook up, if it starts, the wire coming from your ignition switch. Hook that up and see if it'll start. If it doesn't start, all these wires go through the tube from the front of the machine to the back of the machine. The back edge of that tube is sharp. They don't deburr them. And over a period of years, from the vibrations when this thing is running, it will wear through the wires and can short them out. So check that position. Check your ignition switch to make sure that's not shorted out. Then hook up the last wire that comes from your safety system and try to start it again. If it doesn't start, then you know you have a problem with the safety system. It's either a switch, a wire somewhere is wore through, or it's that little brain that's like $55 has shorted out. Now one place I typically have people tell me is the wires coming out of the back of the tube have rubbed through and it's shorting. The wires going to the yoke switch that tells that little brain that you have the clutch pushed in. Uh, one viewer or two viewers I've had tell me that their belt has rubbed through the insulation on them wires and them are shorting out. So that's a couple of spots you want to check to make sure you don't have an issue there. Then you get yourself a meter that has continuity and you start checking switches. There are several on the newer the machine, the more they have. I don't know what the 2019 and 20s have. I haven't looked at one that closely, but you'll have one on your yoke. You'll have one on your seat. You'll have a switch on your mower deck. Let's see, where else do they have switches? I've got a couple machines sitting here. And they have that um, annoying little silver tab you have to push down to be able to mill backwards. That's not really an electrical switch. It's a mechanical switch. And if you want to mill going backwards, you have to, I talk about that in another video. <clears throat> but these are the things you want to look for. I had a viewer get a hold of me and he wants to turn in he wants to turn his old snapper into a cart for his kids. And this video is for him also. And he wants to unhook all the safety switches. Uh, he's taken the deck off, so that switch will be unhooked. Now, whether I'd have to get a meter out and check to see if it's normally open or closed, if it's a normally open switch, all you have to do is unplug it. If it's a normally closed switch, you'll have to twist the wires together. You can tell that's simple enough. Just unplug it try to start it. If it doesn't start, twist them little buggers together and put a wire nut on it. And then try it again. The safety switch he wants to unhook. If you're going to have kids driving this thing around, even as slow as a snapper goes, I would not unhook the safety switch. Sorry, I just wouldn't do it. If the kids are small and they're too light to activate the switch, maybe they're too small to be driving it. Um, I hate to tell you to go ahead, yeah, just unhook all that crap. You don't need it. And then somebody gets hurt. I was going to feel really bad if I get some of my viewers injured. Not to mention I'm going to feel really worse if one of them sues me. So no, I do not recommend unhooking the safety switches. They are on there for a reason. They're on there for a purpose. And it's important to have them on there. 
Now, when I tell somebody to unhook that little wire from your magneto shorting block coming from your safety system, that is only to test your machine to see what's wrong with it. It's a quick way to find out if your safety system is the problem or not. Just unhook that little wire. When you get it all figured out and get it fixed, please hook that back up. It is important item to have. And I guess I'm done preaching. I just don't want any of my viewers to get injured. <coughs> and I don't want to get sued. So, back to my shirts. He, thank you again. I really appreciate these. Again, this is a shot of the one that he was wearing and that he made himself. And this one he made just for me, I guess, to make videos with. So I'm going to be wearing it periodically. You know, intermix it with my other ones. And uh, let me know what you think of it. And until next time, work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping. We'll talk to you soon.